Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Puente with the Long Beach Post and we're here today with Kelly Colopy, the Director of Long Beach Health and Human Services. And we're gonna to talk today about the disturbing rise in coronavirus cases and a little bit about where Long Beach stands and, and what we can see, uh, what we'll see moving forward. And just wanna say first off, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. And we really appreciate what you're doing. I can't even imagine what it, it's like right now being in working in public health. Um, are, you, are you getting any sleep or <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> you know, we do pretty well. I, uh, I will admit when this whole thing started, it was so uh, it was so much and everybody was was so tired and I think we've just gotten used to it. So while the hours have not, this is like we, re we, we reset what our normal level set is and uh, we've been able to manage um, across all the different efforts going through. Right, well, yeah, we thank you. And thank um, you. first off, just wanted to talk about the big news today, what we're seeing on CNN. And California had a spike in uh, 6,652 cases yesterday. Um, LA County has seen a rise. Um, Everybody is just really worried, uh, concerned about this, this significant spike. So um, what, what are you seeing? And um, are, are you worried about this? You know, we are seeing an increase in cases. So we've had some of our largest reporting uh, single over the last couple of days. Um, so yes, you know, we are worried. Um, we're seeing that a lot of this is sort of in our younger population. So maybe people who, you know, from exactly where they're getting, we haven't had a chance to follow up on everything yet, um, but we are seeing, um, so younger populations. So whether those are folks who are engaging in protests, whether the folks going out more to, uh, to restaurants and other, social related activities, maybe gathering more at the beaches and others. Um, we are just increasing uh, what is some feeling like, you know, we're still okay is around our hospitalization rates. So our hospitalization rates were on a, a little bit of a climb for a while, but they've really stabilized. And so um, we are pretty consistent across our hospitalization. We do hospital capacity in the city. So I'm sort of watching, I'm watching both numbers very, very close. Okay, yes, I, I know that Long Beach, um, I think as of yesterday, we had um, we had 3,405 cases and up from yeah. Friday, that's, um, we, we have about 400 new cases. So, I mean, that, that seems from, I've been following the numbers and that seems like a pretty significant increase that we've seen in the city. So you're saying that you, we're seeing now that it's mostly younger individuals, like w what's that age range? Yeah. So just, you know, so we, we're still sort of sitting with all the data and, and analyzing it, but just, you know, sort of a brief overview is a lot more people in their 20s and 30s than we've seen um, otherwise. So, you know, uh, definitely younger. Um, and I think that, um, uh, so it, I mean, yeah, so that's what we're seeing. But I, I think, you know, we have, you're right. We were seeing every once in a while, we would see maybe a hundred cases come in over a couple of days. And we say, okay, the numbers have gone up, but we did, you know, we, we have seen now, yesterday was 230 cases over a couple of days, um, and today we've got over 100 cases. But the other thing to pay attention to is when those actual tests were done, and then when they were done. So whether they're coming through our drive throughs through private physicians, or being seen in LA County, a lot of the time it takes a little bit longer before it all shows up. So you might see 230 on a Tuesday, but those might be things that were, you know, those might be people that received tests for like the four days before that. So what we do is we spread them back out across, you know, across the dates and that's what we're trying to report. So we are doing that. So what you don't see is any single day spike that's that big, but we do see is, is just a sort of an elevated, an elevated trend. Okay. And is Long Beach doing um, any contact tracing to where they've identified any hotspots or areas? Um, like parties or from the protests or areas where they may have identified some. some so we are doing, we are doing investigations. So every positive case, we investigate like who they've been in contact with, uh, where they've been, but we focus more on the people they're in contact with versus where they, where they were. And so, because that's where our outreach is, like who are you in contact with and what's going on? And um, we've had some tell us they were part of the protests. We've had some tell us that they were at a, you know, they were at a restaurant with some with that, that maybe hadn't had all the rules in place. So we are following up on those uh, for sure, but we don't have specific hotspots necessarily as like a single place where a whole bunch came from uh, at this time. And with the increase that we are seeing in younger people, um, possibly from restaurants going out, do you feel that Long Beach has reopened too early? You know, I think 
um, it's really about whether we are following all the rules when the reopening is occurring. And I think that's really what I want everybody to understand is if people follow all the guidelines, uh, meaning people, individuals who are out and about, if you're out in the public and you're in community, or you're going to businesses and businesses aren't following those guidelines, then we need to know about them. Um, so we're not sitting in a space right now where we're opening too quickly. What I am concerned about is that it's really, you know, people, when you start to open, everybody thinks like, ah, oh, it must be safer. Um, and so they start not following the rules when actually it's actually less safe because more people are out. And we need people to really make sure that they're keeping their face coverings on and that businesses are doing what they're supposed to do. I think if we have that in place, then we can be stabilized. It's just, it's the, it's the complete, um, these people just think, you know, they're tired and uh, I get it. You know, these orders are not easy. People have been locked up for a long time. It's fun to get out, but we need to be so vigilant right now about, about what's going on. And I think that we can be in sort of the stabilized place for a while if we can just get that into place. And that's our focus right now. And that's, that's been a big question that's come from the community. Um, a lot of people reporting people not wearing masks, businesses yeah. not following guidelines. What is Long Beach doing to crack down on this? And are, is, are, are there any plans to be more um, aggressive with enforcing this? Yeah, so um, we're, not, uh, we're really working, focusing right now on businesses who are not, who are not engaged. So people can, um, they can call and we have a phone number and I'm going to have to send that to you. I don't have it in front of me right now, but there is a place to report um, for businesses that you may walk into or that you see uh, that you notice are not following the guidelines, whether it's like their staff aren't wearing face coverings or people are sitting too close to each other. All those kind of things can be reportable. And then we have a venue task force. Uh, that's going on that's a, a mix of code enforcement environmental health staff who are going out and starting to educate so if it really is they just aren't aware of all the protocols and we'll work really closely to educate them and we're also giving out face coverings and face shields and things so that people can get open with the appropriate uh with the appropriate ppe um but then if they we still don't see it then there is an escalation of fines and then you know if necessary we would get to the point where we would actually close the business um so we are we're you know we're, we're we're taking education first, but we want to make sure that folks are paying attention. Um, in terms of folks on, you know, on the street, individuals, it's just uh, we're starting a ambassador program in the next couple of weeks. So you'll see people in parks, you'll see people like in open streets and business corridors, just having conversations with people and with businesses and checking in and doing everything we can to be able uh, to support people to follow the guidelines. <laughs> And so in Long Beach, we have seen an increase in the overall number of cases, but our hospitalization rates have remained relatively stable. I would say hovering at about 70 to between 70 and 80, I'd say that's correct. And our, our death rates have not increased. Uh, we haven't seen a spike in deaths no. uh, either. Um, so why, why do you think we're seeing an increase in cases, but not necessarily an increase in hospitalizations and deaths? So hospitalizations tend to be for people who get really ill, right? So those are the ones that that's the reason why we're focusing on that population. So I think that there, there is more community spread. Uh, there are people who tell me that it's like worse than any flu they've ever had. It's just awful, but they don't ever end up in the hospital. So they're able to recover at home and we don't see them. And so I think some people are like, you know, you hear about the asymptomatic people that never knew they had it. And so then people think, so it's not so bad. And there are others that it feels like it was a flu, but it wasn't worse than a flu. And for others, it's almost like pneumonia. And it's, they, just, they describe it as like near death, but they're still able to stay home. And so there is such a mix of how people experience it. And there's more and more cases just because more and more people are out. Um, and so, but the, if the hospitalizations are primarily for those who have underlying health conditions, uh, maybe older adults uh, and others that where the impact is far greater. And it's was to make sure that those you know, that the more there is in the community, the more we can protect our older adults and, and most medically fragile, because um, that's the space that will be who we will be in, in our hospitals and, and possibly in our death rates. And uh, I know one of the big indicators that the state and city has looked at is uh, positivity rates, the rate of people testing positive compared to how many people are being tested. What's our, our um, current average positivity rate right now and, and how many people are being tested daily in Long Beach? We've had a huge uptick in the number of people who are getting tested primarily because um, just everybody's really paying a lot more attention and going back to work and other things. So uh, over the weekend, we had a day where we tested almost 1,100 people in one day in our drive throughs Yeah, it was a lot. Capacity is a thousand, so I thought. So we're, we're, we're capacity. 
Yeah, so we um, we had a whole lot of appointments scheduled and a lot of walk-ups. And so we did our best, but we are now having to turn people away. It's just, it, the demand is so great right now. Um, so we are really encouraging people to to make appointments. And, um, uh, not, and to, not to stop you, but that's um, one of the big questions too. We've had some people that have had said that there's been lags in making appointments where they've had to make appointments like a week out. Is that is that because of the surge in demand? It is. We were at a point where we could get everybody in within two days, um, but we can't. It's it's the surge in demand. So we are working to see if we can increase our capacity. Um, you know, the, the state requirement is is to be able to test 15 per 100,000, and we're testing significantly over that um, right now. So today, yesterday, I think we only tested maybe 850, so not over 1,000, but that's still 850 people um, who were tested. And then our turnaround rate those test results it used to be quite delayed but it's about 48 hours right now so we feel really good about um, our capacity with our labs and our ability to get results to people so that they know if they're positive or not and, and, and then our, our, our average positivity rate again is no. yeah so today um it's 8.4 percent 8.4 which used to be in the low sixes um so it has gone up there is community spread it's showing in the number of cases that we have so uh, we are, we're just, you know, really uh, working with our community to do everything we can that people follow the guidelines uh, because it really does matter and it has a big impact on, on the spread. And that's, that's why I, I think when I spoke with you uh, for an interview back in uh, mm -hmm. May, just before uh, Memorial Day weekend, our, right. our positivity rate was a low 6% and it came down from, I think our high at um, April was 17%, which is a pretty right. high. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the following week was when we announced reopening everything. And I was kind of surprised because I because our positivity rate was a little bit lower, but we had a lot of other higher indicators um, for for things. And then it seemed that we we were able to just to reopen the following week with um, while well, we still had some indicators that didn't necessarily meet the state state guidelines. Yeah, we did. We did not open. Um, we actually met all the state guidelines before we reopened. So all of the different indicators that the state had laid out, the ability, the ability to move more quickly through the attestation process of the state, we met all the guidelines um, at that time. And uh, there's sort of a, a monitoring list they have now that we pay attention to. Um, and the, the positivity rate is now starting to hit that. It's supposed to be below 8%. Um, it does vary, so it's seven days. Um, and so we are, this is why, you know, we're going to, we're going to hold off for a while. So the state is not planning to open any anytime soon. You know, I think a lot of people are really, uh, they're wanting to gather. They're wanting to be with their friends. They're wanting to be in all these spaces and, you know, gatherings still aren't allowed. And uh, aside, you know, when unattached to a business, uh, people are supposed to really be staying uh, with their households and, a lot of people think that means family. So you can bring all your family in from everywhere and gather. But what we're talking about is people you live with. Like, what's your COVID circle, right? The ones that you're with all the time. And, and to really stick to that to stick to that point. So we're right at the edge of some of those indicators. And so we are going to hold steady for a little while and not, uh, not open additional uh, businesses. The personal services um, uh, were already designed to open this week. They've all been preparing and make sure they have the PPE. So those will continue to move forward. It's already written into order. There will not be anything else written in the order um, coming soon. So what um, what other areas would we not, where are we going to hold off on reopening now? So like sort of the family entertainment centers, uh, we won't be moving forward um, at this time. And that's, uh, so that is allowed uh, at the state level right now is to open some of those movie theaters at a low capacity and others. And we are holding off um, in those spaces at this time. Uh, we also have very uh, tight restrictions around um, bars and other things. So we wanted bars to be able to open as a business practice. We, in, we realize that income is actually a huge public health issue as well um, in terms of wellness. And so we're just balancing everything we can in terms of, you know, physical safety and as wellness overall. And, um, you know, uh, unemployment and poverty and things like that is not a space of wellness. So we're doing everything we can. Um, I have a whole group of people walking into my lobby right now. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, uh, we're, so we're we're moving past some of the base state indicators like positivity rates where we're getting we're getting higher than the state um, minimum requirements and and also cases we keep keep inching higher 
um, with our with our cases and numbers. At one point, is Long Beach would Long Beach consider scaling back and possibly closing certain businesses and having new stay at home orders? Um, yeah, I think that the key place that we'd be looking at there is when we start to see our hospitalizations really spike. So you know, many of many of this. It, the, the original starting space is to really protect those who are the most vulnerable. Um, and so we're really starting to, the places we would start to look at is much higher level hospitalization, and inability to handle uh, what surge capacity and others could look like. So um, we do, you know, a regional approach. So Long Beach has its own health department, as does Pasadena and then LA County. And we do, we're looking at that attention to the region because there's so much mobility, right? So they spend their time in LA, other places working or doing other things or vice versa. So we do our best to sort of be along in, in the same guidelines. Their positivity rates look about like ours do right now in LA and, uh, and in Pasadena. So we're really, um, we're working to understand like at what point do we think as a, as a system um, and as a region that we would start to scale back down if we can't maintain and sort of hold more consistent at, at this time frame. Okay, so hospitalization rates you would say is the number one indicator right now that you're looking at? And uh, yeah. you've, you've explained this to me very well, and it, it, it was really helpful. Could you just explain a little bit about our surge capacity with hospital rates and at what level would our hospital numbers have to inch up to where we would consider scaling back? So the state, um, as part of the key, one of the key indicators that we had to uh, meet was a 35% surge capacity. So, um, so the total number of hospital beds is somewhere between 1,400 and 1,500 available beds overall within the city of Long Beach. And that's, that's our, you know, our key hospitals, uh, St. Mary's Memorial, um, uh, Lakewood Regional. So we look at, all, we look at those, those hospital spaces. And then, but, you know, so right now we're about 58 to 60%, um, but that's not just related to COVID, that's like all their beds because, right, COVID is a portion of them, but we have to look at all the other things that are there too. And so we have plenty of room within that, right? We have that 35%, the ability to surge. If we started getting up to where, where the daily rates were closer to 85% or something like that, then we would, you know, we'd be looking at that because they have an extra 400 bed capacity that's not normally in operation that they could build on. But we started to get up to a, a sort of 85% range for just overall hospitalizations and especially um, the, you know, the really high level beds uh, that we would then start to, you know, maybe. Uh, be, we'd be at a very concerned level and then start to think about what it could look like if we had to close down certain areas or really uh, begin much more focus um, on our medically fragile folks. So so say we have like 70 people in the hospital right now. What, how, mm -hmm. what, what number then would that get to? Would it be over about 100 or so? No, you know, it's, it's hard to tell because it can't just be the beds, right? So it has to be what's going on for them everywhere. So, and also, so there's a whole lot of different space that we're looking at their overall bed capacity, not like a number of COVID beds specifically. So it's hard to come up with an exact number there while we, we because it takes the whole context. So we'd just be saying like, if everything gets up to a much higher percentage of the bed utilization, whether it's COVID or not, and how many ventilators are being used, um, how many like, you know, emergency beds are used, then we, that's when we start making decisions. It's not specific to a COVID number. And then the, the issue of nursing homes, obviously a huge issue in Long Beach and all over the country. Um, what, what percentage of people in um, hospitals right now come from our long-term care facilities? I think last time we spoke, you said it was about 80%, or it's, it's a pretty high number. Oh, I can pull that up in two seconds, but we can keep talking and I can be able to tell you in a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't have it in my head. Uh, it, was, it was about 70 or 80%. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a huge issue in Long Beach. I think we've had a we had um, 121 deaths the other day uh, on Monday, and 92 of those were in nursing homes. And it's still it's still just a huge issue there. But yeah, I was wondering how many are in the hospital right now that come from that a from long term care. Yeah. So yeah. So right now we're at 57 percent of our hospital beds um, overall, and then. Um, I'll have to look, but yeah, we can continue to talk. But it is a, it is a high percentage coming from our uh, long term care facilities. We, we can get back to that, but yeah. um, also, I was I, I, sorry, I would say forty six percent 
of our hospitalizations right now are long-term care facilities. Um, oh, okay. 48% are from our for community spread. And then 5% are like other sort of, um, might be like a substance use residential or something like that, like some other. So it's approximately, so yeah. almost half of the people are coming from, of our hospitalizations are coming from long-term care facilities. The deaths on the other hand, almost uh, three quarters of the deaths within our city um, are from long-term care facilities. Uh, match the reasons they're, you know, they're very much older with very compromised uh, health conditions. Uh, it's, just, it's harder in those cases. That's that's a significant change, I think, from when we spoke last, where um, the the vast majority yes. of people hospitalized were nursing homes, and now we're seeing almost half our community spread. That's that's yeah. interesting. Is that is that a number that concerns you that you're looking at, or? Um, which is, it doesn't concern me yet, uh, just given that, the, the, that, it's, that we still only have about an average of 70, 80 folks um, across our system. But it could, you know, if you start to look at our, at our numbers, uh, at the age ranges and other things like that, then certainly um, be looking to see how much we think that's going to grow. And we'll put that into some modeling to determine at what point that's going to be another concern. And, and if it does come to the point where we need to scale back on certain businesses or reclosing, mm -hmm. How, do you do you feel that it would be difficult at this point? Like the genie's out of the bottle. People may, you know, say people are out. And they've been cooped up for months. I mean, are, how concerned are you that it, it may be hard to actually get people to reverse course? I think it is going to be difficult. I mean, it's difficult for people to maintain course now, right? So one of the reasons why we're seeing these increases is because people aren't maintaining the course at this time. Uh, we see a lot of folks without their face coverings on and, you know, people starting to gather. If you go to our beaches and other places, you know, we have a lot of things. We're out there really trying to enforce them, but people want to be out. So I think, you know, if we can get to the point now where everybody um, is really just really, you know, really engaged and, and participating in the social, in the distancing, so the six feet, but also the other protocols, I think that that's, that's the space we're working toward right now. Um, it would be very difficult. Uh, to start to scale back but if we have to do it we certainly will uh, there's been a lot of rumor that we'll have a fall surge and so there may be at some point that you know at the national level and then california level there's a focus on something later this fall if that occurs we may have to do it but i know it'd be very very difficult one for people and you know, for businesses yeah i was going to ask you about that how concerned are you that we could see another surge of this in the fall <laughs> Well, we're still seeing increase now, so <laughs> um, I, you know I do I do have concerns. Um, you know, all of us do in the, in the public health world about what this is going to look like, and we're seeing massive surges in southern you know in the southern United States, and you're hearing a lot about Florida and Texas and other places as well as California. So um, we are you know we're working. Uh, we spend a lot of time on the policy, CDC, the state, and other places planning um, for what the next round could be. Uh, watching for this opportunity for an immunization, you know, a vaccine, um, a viable vaccine, because uh, that will be our next, you know, that would be our next large scale event is to, is to work to get everybody vaccinated. No, um, let me, I'm going to look for, look at some of the questions from readers real quick. Let's see what we have there. Um, well, we got, yeah, the big, just the big question is how are we enforcing the mandates, which could we be doing some more ticketing you'd see in the future? I know we um, we have handed out a few tickets for businesses, but is that is that something that the city may consider? So there's the different, you know, it's like, it's not the, um, so we do have a, a mechanism that we're working with, with, the, with the businesses. So they are receiving fines already um, if they're not following the rules. And, and if they continue to not uh, follow the rules, you know, that we could get to this place of closure. Um, so that the venue task force and our environmental health department is, is, is focusing a lot on that. We doubled up last weekend um, on, on going out just the weekends that seem to be sort of um, everybody wants it to be a weekend <laughs> and, uh, and, and take care, you know, and take and, and participate in weekend activities. Um, so we are we are we are stepping up definitely uh, our enforcement. And um, a lot of health officials like uh, Dr. Barbara Ferrer in LA said that, you know, we, we had anticipated an increase with reopening. We knew this was gonna happen. Um, yeah. Did you anticipate this much of an increase or has it, has it kind of surprised you how quickly it, it has increased in the set last several weeks or how are you feeling about what you've seen? Well, I think the cases increased just until the last week. 
like it feels like this past week we are seeing um, more, you know, just higher levels of reporting again. So um, I think that is, we opened a bunch of stuff and we had the protest all at the same time. It's really hard to determine, you know, to really tie it all back because we opened restaurants, the protests, salons, more recently, you know, bars. And um, so we've had 60 something protests in the city of Long Beach over the last three weeks. Yeah. Um, some ranging from multiple thousands of people, um, others much smaller. So a lot of people are out. Um, you know, First Amendment rights, which we support completely, but it does mean there's a lot of people out there, maybe not fully, fully distanced or face coverings on. And um, how Long Beach still, it still seems that our numbers have not increased as significantly as LA County and some of the other, like Orange County has had, had seen some spikes. Um, how, how has Long Beach fared compared to our, our neighbors in the region? Well, so LA, um, we've been below LA County on everything. Uh, our cases and our deaths, um, we did sort of per 100,000. Um, we did have, a, we have gone a little bit above them in terms of our hospitalizations overall, but still pretty consistent. Um, so we are above the state in our cases per 100,000 and for deaths per 100,000, but we are below LA County and LA City. Um, we were above Orange County until they've started having all these increases we're analyzing right now, um, where we compare to them, we have some of that information in this week. And, and how important would you say it is to, speaking of Orange County and the yeah. whole issue with the masks, how important yeah. is it to be wearing masks right now? You know, it's so important. And in fact, it, there's a state mandate, right? Yeah. So the state had not mandated, until, mandated, mandated it until last week. So while Long Beach has been holding pretty tight um, on it, um, Orange County had determined not to. Um, and so because we are so... You know, it's like half of like the whole border of our city is Orange County. And a lot of people work and play in both places going back and forth. And so it's a real concern for us if Orange County start really going up. Um, that just brings more into, into, into the city of Long Beach as the regional approach. Uh, it's face coverings are important. And now given that it is a state mandate, um, you know, it's very important. And, and with the data are starting to prove it out. You know, there wasn't a lot of data early on about face covering. So people were like, give or take. Um, but it really does show that if two people both have face coverings on and one may be infected, it really does improve uh, significantly uh, the safety um, for the people around you. So, you know, the face covering is, is your way to sit, to really support people around you and being healthy and safe. It's a sign of respect as you walk into grocery stores and other places because what you're showing is that you respect those people. You respect their health, you respect their livelihood um, by wearing your face covering um, into the store. And as they are wearing their face coverings, they're showing the respect for you and it's creating a greater opportunity for health. Great. Right. And so Kelly, oh, in all, um, you know, we've seen an increase in cases, an increase in young people, yeah. uh, community transmission and, and increases across the country right now. Yeah. What, what would you say to Long Beach residents? What's, what's your message right now? <laughs> It's, it, this is what I, I mean, you know, uh, just be particularly vigilant. It is not safer out there right now. Um, in fact, it is less safe because so many people are out. So, you know, it's uh, uh, somewhat akin to, to, to driving a car, right? So is driving a car always safe? No, um, but you weigh your wrist every time you get in the car and then you wear your seatbelt and your seatbelt makes it safer and you have an airbag and it makes you safer. That's your covering, right? So as you leave your house each day, think about what is the risk level um, for yourself, if you're going on a walk by yourself, low risk, you know, but if you're heading into a restaurant and other places, um, it's just so important that you have your seatbelt, your face covering, um, and that you're keeping your distance and all those other protocols, because that's, that's the ability to really uh, reduce your risk of infection and otherwise infecting others who are around you who may have health conditions and other things that they're really sick. Great. Well, thank you, Kelly. Really appreciate your time. This is our Long Beach Health Director and keep up the awesome work and we are behind you. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.